Wait, Where? I didn't know about this part. Where? He came back for round two. Barack Obama came back for seconds. Let's go. He gave bro the Obamacare. Yes, dude. Yes, he did. Barack Obama, you're done. If you want to run for camp, if you want to run for president again, guess what? It's over. I've been waiting to watch this. I've seen clips of this because it's really hard not to see clips of this. I'm really hard, like Barry was. Lerald Sinclair, not of Sinclair Broadcasting, no relation to Sinclair Broadcasting. He got it. He got sucked off. Thank God there is a brave man by the name of Tucker Carlson who certainly isn't desperate, like insanely desperate for clout, covering the real stories that are incredibly important. And that is, Bardock No Bummer is a gay man, okay? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to everybody from Duluth who only have Larry Sinclair to represent your beautiful city, okay? The Duluth Dyson. Sucked off Bardock, no bummer. It's pretty amazing that Barack Obama got as far as he did. In 2004, the summer of 2004, Barack Obama gave the keynote address at the Democratic Convention in Boston. And when he walked to the podium, probably only a small percentage of people in the room knew how to pronounce his name. Yeah, he walked up there like a gay man would. I'm Tucker Carlson, and today we're going to talk about Barack Obama's homosexual tendencies. He was totally unheard of. No one knew Barack Obama. At the time, he was a state senator in Illinois. Four years later... Hey, Hassan, would you consider what my Raza did to you in the airport races, or do you think you were targeted because you had expensive equipment? What, you think... You think the Mexican Customs and Border Patrol was like, oh, this guy looks Muslim? Like, no, man. They were like, this guy's a rich American idiot. We're gonna fucking rob him blind. We're gonna, we're gonna empty out his pockets. Yeah, they were racist towards the wealthy. That's what they did. Yeah, they saw some fucking dumbass gringo walking around. Bro, they were being classes. That's why it's fucked up. What is this? What you keep linking this thing? Hassan is on his way to check out this story. Oh my god, this explains so much. Chad, that's why Hassan is going to to uh Mexico to see if the Gog Gog 9000 is actually good. Wait a second. He's not, wait, is that where the Duluth Dyson lives? Second. Holy fuck. Hassan's going to Mexico to figure out if that. I'm about to get my shit sucked by fucking. I'm about to get my shit sucked off by Larry Sinclair, okay? That's right. Yeah, I'll say it. I'm not even embarrassed. I'm like, damn. This guy made Obama come in a short period of time, even, o even after Obama was doing crack. No cocaine dick here, okay? <laughs> you know, the glizzy gobbler. You know, live. I gotta smoke crack first. It's up to the name. Holy shit, to see what Barack had. Bro, it's the closest he's ever been to Obama. That's true. I was trying to, I'm trying to get my shit sucked. Later, he once again spoke to the Democratic convention, but this time as the nominee. Meteoric doesn't begin to describe it. How did this happen? Well, the outlines are fairly well known. I love the fact that Obama's gone 16 years in the public eye being president. And we're supposed to believe this is the first time this dirt could have been dug up on him? Yeah, it's totally legit. First of all, as I showed to you the old tapes uh, before the Tucker Carlson interview, this was known. This was like a National Enquirer-style story. It was just so insanely unbelievable that zero people believed it. It's just funny because, like, American politics has devolved, especially on the Republican side, like... We've gotten so much dumber than we used to be that Tucker Carlson can repackage like 2007, 2008 conspiracy theories and like more people will believe it. And the funny thing is there is evidence. There's evidence that, that this is fake, obviously. Aside from how insane the statements were, okay? Aside from how insane the statements were, this guy already did a lie detector test and he failed the lie detector test, which he then doubled down on his fucking conspiracies and claimed, okay, that the lie detector test was failed by like uh, someone on the Obama camp. Like they paid 
they paid the lie detector guys to fail him. That's what he said. So, like, there's nothing. There's nothing in this story. When he originally came out and revealed that he sucked Obama's cock, we watched the video. We watched the video two days ago before I left for Mexico. There were people in the room that were audibly laughing at him. Like, when he first leaked the gruesome details, there were people, there were so many people in the room laughing at him that his microphone picked it up, okay? Now, a couple different reasons as to why the story is so insane. I, I will, bro went to Mexico to cover American politics, shaking my head. First of all, I opened the day up with Mexico politics, okay? Abortion is now decriminalized in Mexico at the federal level. Mexico won, America zero. Uh, Mexico, as we also found out, uh, loves to tax the rich. Uh, they tax my ass real hard. So Mexico too, America zero. Oh, just kidding. That was another funny thing that people were like, oh, classic Hassan uh, hates taxes because he's rich. All of a sudden, the rich hate taxes, huh? And I'm like, bro, I live in California, like very proudly. You know how much I pay in taxes? Like, what do you, what do you mean? A lot more than you do, bitch. <laughs> when have I ever said I'm anti-taxes? Anyway, let's continue. Well, no, no, rarely talked about. A small group of Democratic donors, mostly in Chicago, decided that Barack Obama was their guy. He was the vessel for their ambitions. They paid for his campaign. They paved the way for his rise. He spent two years pointlessly in the United States Senate preparing to run for president in 2008. And of course, in the end, he won. But the question was, who was this man? Where did he come from? What did he spend his life doing before he became president of the United States? Well, the news media, whose job it is to answer those questions, spent the entire 08 campaign. Like this, this guy, this is what I was talking about. Hold on, I got to show this. This guy goes, I thought you liked taxes, says Brandon Morse. Okay, host of Brandon Morse's brand risk on Rumble, of course. And then this guy goes, confirm, taxes are actually cool, good, and very patriotic to pay. Yeah, because this isn't real fucking taxes, dog. How do people not understand that what happened here is not the real normal taxes like i thought that this part would have led them on would have clued them in on it like do they think that the irs makes up a number like one is extortion okay with the with the uh, pr uh possible threat of detention the other is taxes okay I know if you're a fucking libertarian pervert who uh, is most likely a pedophile, you don't understand. You think, like, all taxes are like that. But, like, there's a difference between, like, actual taxes that you pay, which are good. It's a 5 to 25% tax, but it's randomly to people at the border. Yeah. And also, random in the sense that... <laughs> it's random in the sense that, like, they made up a number. Like, that's not how the IRS works, big dog. That's not how that works. The IRS isn't going... The IRS isn't going, hey, I've decided that, like, this year, you're just going to pay, uh, I don't know, 25% of a million dollars. And you're like, wait, what, what the fuck? Like, I didn't make a million dollars. It's like, no, nah, you did, actually, or you're going to jail. <laughs> like, that's not how that works. It's so stupid. But, of course, if you're a fucking libertarian, you don't see a difference. You're literally that stupid. You're like, oh, the old taxes are like that and trying to keep you from knowing the answers. By election day, most Americans knew only one thing about Barack Obama, other than he was handsome and a good communicator, hope and change. But they knew nothing about him, his origins, what or his proclivity to have gay sex with the Duluth Dyson. He believed and legitimate questions about those facts were turned away, as they often are, with the claim that's a conspiracy theory. You're crazy. Technological goods are more expensive in Mexico. People are smuggling products to sell them for profit. This is an ongoing thing. Brother, I understand why they have that tax. It just does not apply in my situation. You are quite literally watching me use the equipment that they said they gave an arbitrary number to that they decided to tax me on. Why are people doing this over and over again? You can have an understandable tax 
for people who are trying to smuggle technological goods into Mexico to sell them. Do I look like you? Do I look like a fucking computer salesman from where you are standing? Do I come across like I am in Mexico to sell computers? Where are the computers if I am a computer salesman? The law itself is. The law itself does not allow you to have more than one laptop. I have one laptop. Oh my God. People so ready to lick other countries' cops' booths. Yeah. Well, this is also taxes. So they think that this is like, you know, they think this is like a legitimate, uh, a legitimate application of the tax itself. Or they want to try and like, they want to try <clears throat> and, and justify it because like there are, they want to say like, no, 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 there are practical and legitimate uses for why this tax exists. I'm not against the, the tax existing. I'm against someone being like, hey, your open box monitor that you have that is like been used already, okay, alongside your fucking webcam with a dent on it, we've decided is worth $1,000. You're going to sell this for $1,000 or more in Mexico. So we're going to tax you on it. Isn't this your website, monitorsformexico.com? Chatters always have to inform you when they know a thing that is only slightly relevant, but hey, they know a fun fact, so you must listen. Yeah. Cops can't pocket the money if you pay with card. They were just being assholes or hoping you pay cash. I thought it was because they missed out on the taxes you would have paid if you bought the hardware there. No, I asked them that. I was like, I don't understand what the need for this is, what the purpose is. No, it's literally because they, they think that they were trying to imply that I was selling these fucking, this, this, this tech equipment in my Pelican case. And like, they knew I wasn't doing that anyway. It doesn't matter. It, it was very obvious. Everybody involved knew what the fuck was going on, myself included, except for the motherfuckers who weren't there. You tried arguing with the border agent? I almost fought the border agent. What do you mean? I was yelling at the border agent. He said he was going to take my passport away, which no, the fuck he wasn't. It's mostly, I think, um, you messing with the wrong people. What? What do you mean I'm messing with the wrong people? What what is this take, dude? No. Guys, okay? If I get stopped by like actual fucking cops when I'm in some random part of Mexico, like federal uh agents or whatever, that's entirely different. If I'm in the Mexican airport and Customs and Border Patrol is doing some fuck shit, no, I don't think they're going to take unlawfully detain and arrest an American citizen with an American passport especially one that has like a media presence on top of that there's just no shot that that's fucking happening because then it's like literally like then it's like literally a a, a, a national uh, crisis and it's not just me it's like most americans you will people think that the the mexican border patrol is like you're gonna get beheaded in the air conditioning law yeah yeah people think the customs and border patrol is like the cartel or some shit yeah the embassy will come and protect 9-11 andy you want to know why? Because it has nothing to do with 9-11 Andy. It has everything to do with the American passport. Because if America doesn't unconditionally fucking defend Americans on other countries, then that's more of a stain on America's hegemonic power than anything else. It has nothing to do with my political points or my opinions. It just shows weakness in America. Uh, international incident is what I meant, not crisis. Surely nothing like that has happened before in America ignored it, right? Yeah, Saudi Arabia killing fucking Jamal Khashoggi is a little bit different than fucking Mexico. This is how you know Hassanabe ain't actually from California law. They will unlawfully detain Americans and make them pay to get out. Really? How do we get from gay Obama to this? I don't know. We were just talking about getting fucked. Check logs. I am a border patrol agent. Chat. We're never going to get Obama sucking and fucking. This sunlock sucks. Not as Obama would have, though. <clears throat> All right, we're going to get back to Obama sucking and fucking instead of the Mexican government fucking and sucking me, okay? We're going to get back to it. This is like, this is literally what I've been waiting for, what I wanted to watch with you guys, okay? Um, what I wanted to watch with you guys, minus the people who are unsubscribed, because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, if you want to be a part of the people that actually watch it, then, you know, you're going to have to subscribe for $5 or for free. Little do they know, little do the Mexican border guards know that I am not a fucking laptop salesman. I'm a top of the hour ad break trafficker, okay?
And by God, it's time for it. It's fucking time for it, dude. Yeah, tax me on that, bitch. Here's the three minute ad break now. Crazy, shut up! One of the most interesting moments in the 2008 campaign occurred when a man, like Obama himself, came from out of nowhere to recount his experiences with Barack Obama the man. His name was Larry Sinclair, and he told an amazing story. He said that in 1999... So funny, because Tucker does not believe this at all, but he has to fake believe it for the sake of this video and for the sake of his job and what his media career has become. He had encountered Barack Obama in Illinois, had sex with Barack Obama, and then used cocaine with him. Sinclair went on to make these claims publicly at the National Press Club in Washington to sign a sworn affidavit and to take a lie detector test. But he was dismissed. In fact, he was- Wait, yeah, yeah, to take a lie detector test, which he failed. Why did he not mention that? You can't just fucking say somebody took a lie detector test. You can just say lie detector tests are inadmissible in court for a reason, because they suck, right? But he's not even doing that. He didn't even say, like, the, oh, lie detectors are, like, easily, easily failed, uh, which is why, uh, you know, it's inadmissible in court. He just straight up made it seem like he passed it. I, oh, my God. I, I can't tell if Tucker Carlson is not even trying or because he knows his audience is that stupid that he doesn't have to. You know what I mean? It was tapped. Obama shills like Ben Smith of Politico batted the claims out without refuting them. They're absurd. And the rest of the media followed suit. But the claims weren't absurd. We're not claiming they're true, but they were certainly credible. This was a firsthand account of Barack Obama's behavior by someone who was willing to sworn, sign a sworn affidavit to that effect. So the question is, whatever happened to Larry Sinclair? What's his life been like since? That's an interesting story. It turns out Larry Sinclair is still alive. He lives in Mexico. But today, he's in our studio, and we're happy to have him. Larry Sinclair, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, where did you meet Barack Obama? You think Larry sucked Tucker off after? Tucker got his shit sucked off as well. Uh, it was by accident. I was in the Chicago area in 99 for Lee Duke's graduation from the Naval Academy. Who's Lee Duke? He's basically my godson. Okay. Um, I had hired a limousine service. Did, I'm sorry to interrupt. Did you live in Chicago then? No. No, I was actually living in Colorado. I had flown in the night before. Okay. So um, I had hired a limousine service, had made it the driver aware that if Lee couldn't leave the base, because once they graduate, some of them actually get their assignments and they're shipping out and they can't leave the base, that I was still interested in going out and had asked the driver if he knew anybody that was available that might want to show me, you know, Chicago. And he said he did. So well, who was the driver? Uh, his name was Jameer um, Multani. It was with Five Star Limo. Um, so you're just a guy who's in town for the night, and it sounds like you're looking to party, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you're really saying. Yeah. 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 Well, I was in town for a few nights, but yeah, I was definitely looking to party. Bro, you were literally kosher according to the consulate? I know I was kosher. I already pointed to this... Uh, I, I already told them that I was kosher. They were fine. Two cameras or camcorders, a camera gear, three cell phones, one GPS, one electronic organizer, one laptop, notebook, omnibook, or other portable computing device, one portable copier printer, one CD burner, one portable overhead projector, and its accessories. I can't believe we're going back to this. We can't let it go for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, let's just keep going. Party. And Did you make that clear to the driver? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was no misunderstanding. How, how, how direct were you about that? Uh, extremely. <laughs> extremely. Hey, Methika Lewinsky? Oh, my God. First of all, he's a crackhead. Get it right. Wait. Extremely. Okay. Yeah. There was, there was no doubt what I was looking for. Okay. Uh, and he picked me up at my hotel in Gurney and drove into Chicago, pulled up in a bar outside, and there's this guy that's introduced to me as Barack Obama. It was literally that casual that- Had you ever heard of him? No. Did the driver know him? Yep. The driver definitely knew him because the driver said that he was a friend. Interesting. 
What? How would the driver be friends with Barack Obama? I only found out later, uh, dealing with a reporter from Bloomberg News, that apparently the limousine company had been doing business with Tony Resco. Oh. That at the time was somehow affiliated was with Barack Obama's Obama. Orbit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. So he knew Barack Obama. And in his view, Barack Obama liked the same kind of partying you were looking for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So sex and drugs, in other words. <laughs> Dude, come on. This is so good. Like, it's so funny because obviously, like, oh, no, Barack Obama's future in politics surely is not looking too good, right? Like, this is already so late. It's so 2000 and late especially because it was tried in 2008 and it didn't work back then. But like the fact that Tucker Carlson, a man that used to like actually bully politicians on national television who the Republican Party's like top, top politicals were genuinely terrified of is now reduced himself to interviewing crackheads who claim that they sucked Obama's cock in 1999 when Barack Obama is, is long gone. Like, he's not the president anymore. He's never going to run for president. It's done. It's over. And he's doing this on X videos. Now, let me explain something to you. This is yet another Hasanabi lock moment, okay? I told you motherfuckers that as soon as he was off the platform as soon as he was off fox news that this dude is done okay he is going to keep debasing himself further and further and it doesn't matter he's falling and he's trying to grab onto whatever fucking rope or ladder he can grab onto on the way down and each individual video that he comes out with is only furthering his demise okay because ultimately and i told you guys this he's now going up against the ben shapiro's and the steven crowders of the world and those guys have entire youtube media franchises and they know what to do they know how to operate in this space and even then they never had Tucker Carlson's traditional media power. Okay. Musk's Twitter on this. Oh, damn. Even, even Elon Musk is shitting on him. Oh, no. That's crazy. That's another thing that's really funny. I saw a tweet from Brett Weinstein a couple days ago. I saw a tweet from Brett Weinstein. For those of you who don't know, Brett Weinstein is like one of these intellectual dark web guys who was a college professor and uh he got he like got canceled by the woke mob of like 18 year olds who were yelling at him for saying some out of, out of pocket shit at some dumbass liberal college that liberal arts university that he was a professor at and and now he's just like an anti-vaccine skeptic who still tries to suckle on joe rogan's teat for uh developing a media career which he has no charisma to maintain and um you can see it like he you can look at his patreon numbers like they go up every time he goes on joe rogan and they go down immediately after whatever so he he was like an og classic canceled to brett weinstein is the ben shapiro clone brother you got it all wrong no i got it all right brett weinstein used to be the fucking their brothers both of them used to be mostly fucking uh they were they were like kind of liberal but like not really you know what i mean uh they were always like the reactionary libtards brett and eric weinstein anyway just listen you're thinking of brett cooper brett and eric weinstein were like the idw uh weirdos okay who have completely fallen out of uh grace fallen out of relevance uh regardless um brett was I saw, yeah, they, they did. They started at Evergreen College, exactly. Brett, I saw a tweet from him the other day, like a couple days ago, about Elon Musk, where he apparently was like DMing Elon Musk about how his account is not getting the reach that it's supposed to get. And then Elon Musk just fucking blocked him. And, 
And that was such a wonderful, funny ass moment for me because I saw that tweet and I was thinking like, I wonder if Elon Musk just sometimes sits back and looks at the loser brigade that he has surrounded himself with and goes, wow, my life could have been very different. I was adored by liberals. I was like on the cover of Time Magazine. And like so many of the liberal intelligentsia genuinely loved me. And now like a lot of them despise me. And all I have left is like cat turd and and Brett Weinstein. Like I'm their own personal assistant. I'm their own personal social media uh, assistant. Like they just constantly are fucking yelling at me over and over again because I'm not getting enough, uh, because I'm not giving them enough relevancy, I guess. Elon blocked cat turd as well. Yeah. That's what I mean. His family hates him. Everybody fucking hates him. He's just like, a, he's just surrounded by sycophants and yes, man. And dumbasses like fucking Jason Sachs and, and cat turd. And, and even those guys are leaving uh, him behind because you can never make them happy enough. Right? Is it David Sachs or Jason Sachs? What's the guy's name? Is it David Sachs? Um, David Sachs. Yeah, whatever. Who gives a shit? Fucking idiots. Oh, Jason Kalanakis and David Sachs. That's right. That's why I fucked that name up. I did the I did the Vivek Ramaswamy thing. Yeah, Jason Kalanakis is the other fucking idiot. Oh god, they suck so bad. Anyway, but now look at him. He's like even shitting on Tucker Carlson for covering the truth about homosexual misconduct that Barack Obama engaged in. Part I wasn't so sure about until of course, you know, you you make your move, but it became obvious very quick. Um, the Coke part, I thought, was interesting because of the way that I had brought it up. So I'm stepping on your story. So you pull up, and I apologize. So you pull up to this bar. The driver is basically scouting some dude for you to hang out with. Correct. There's this guy, Barack Obama. Have you ever heard of Barack Obama? Before? Never. Okay. Never. Um, we're having drinks. I mentioned the fact that I could use something to wake up. I was extremely exhausted. So you went into the bar? <clears throat> yes, sir. What kind of bar was it? I'm trying to remember. I've been trying to remember the name. I know that the glasses had three X's on them uh -huh. uh, because I remember taking one home uh, for a friend of mine. What, but I mean, generally characterize it was it, it uh, was it was up, bar, no, it was bar, upscale. Bar. It was upscale, quiet. Wasn't really that uh, that really didn't have a lot of energy to it. It was yeah. more relaxed, more like a lounge as opposed to somewhere where people would go and get loud and crazy. Yeah, um, which made it easier to talk. Um, but like I said, when I brought up the fact that I could do something to wake up, um, he immediately knew what I was referring to, um, had made it clear that I was looking for Coke, and I really was, and had made the suggestion that he knew where we could get it, and we left to go get it. Interesting. Did he say what he did for a living? No. I had no idea that he was a representative in the Illinois House. I had no idea he was in politics. I just knew that he was supposedly married and at- Come on, Larry. Tell us the cock. What kind of cock was he working with, man? Are we talking girthy? Is it one of them like, is it one of them fucking short but stout ones? You know what I mean? Like, I don't care. I don't care about what like you and Barack Obama talked about. Is it veiny? Give us the fucking cock specs, man. Seven minutes and 20 seconds in, and I have heard very little about Obama's penis. Okay, does it lean left? Does it lean right? What are we working with? Is he a grower? Is he a shower? Exactly. At the time, was going through some, some issues with the marriage. Did he said that? That was made clear, yeah. Huh. So he didn't tell you he was a politician, but he told you he was having trouble in his marriage? I believe it. I want to believe it, so I'm going to keep believing it. Um, did he say what kind of issues? No. Nope. Remember? No. Nope. So you said, I'm looking for someone to wake up. He knows you're referring to cocaine. I know where to get it. What happens next? We get back in the limo. The driver takes us wherever it is that Barack had instructed him to take us. I had given Barack $250 to pay for Coke. He gets out, comes back. Um, I start putting a line on a CD tray, uh, to snort. Uh, and you're you're in, in the, the limo. limo. Yep. Driving or parked? No, the driver's driving. 
Yep. I start to put a line on a, on a CD tray, and I just happen to notice that he pulls something else out of his pocket. And next thing I know, he's got a little pipe and he's smoking. So I don't have a... He's such a nice guy that he bought him uh, cocaine and he brought his own crack, which I always thought was interesting in, part in, in this story, is that he brought his own crack, you know? Like, that's, that's cool. Like, he's like, don't worry about it. If you like your cocaine, you can keep it. I got crack cocaine in my pocket, you know? That's, it's, it's cool. Like, it's cool. He's like a nice guy. He's like, ah, oh, I'm not a big fan of cocaine and pussy too. <laughs> an issue with it i mean some people smoke some people snort smoking the cocaine yes so as i'm doing a line i just start this is the part where you you know you kind of make your move to to see where things are going so i just started rubbing my hand along his thigh to see where it was going and it went the direction i had intended it to go um so the night became somewhat active sexually and drug wise in the limo. Um, so you hit on him. Did he seem shocked by that? <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. I mean, if you're smoking crack with a stranger in the back of a limo, like you got to imagine things are might go crazy places. <laughs> it's a given, right? You know, because all of the every part of the story is obviously true. Tucker doesn't even look like he believes any of this. Look at Tucker's face right in this very moment, dude. That's the death of a media career right there. Irreversible damage. He gave bro the Obamacare. Yes, dude. Yes, he did. <laughs> well, not only imagine it, I look at it this way. I, look, I've done a lot of crazy things in my lifetime. I'm a pretty good judge of character, and I pretty much know <laughs> whether or not I can move in a certain direction with an individual. I didn't feel that he's like he's saying he could read the vibes. Tucker's like, uh, you didn't get informed consent. That's kind of weird. And he's like, don't worry. The consent was implied. I'm good at reading, picking up vibes. I was going in the wrong direction. I just wasn't so sure how much I could trust the individual right. at, at first. Um, and that was probably one of my bigger concerns. But the fact that I was already becoming somewhat buzzed. Yeah, you kind of throw caution to the wind. You weren't sure you could trust the individual. What does that mean? He, when you meet someone out of the blue and you go to a level that you're doing drugs with or you Brother, at this point, let me explain something to you guys about Larry Sinclair that Tucker Carlson surprisingly did not mention, which Larry Sinclair did back in 2008 when he first came out and did this press conference. The press conference that Larry Sinclair uh, did in 2008, where he talked about having gay sex with Barack Obama and doing crack, was approximately 20 minutes long. The first 10 minutes of said press conference was his entire rap sheet that he voluntarily delivered for no reason whatsoever. I don't know why. But like, at this point, when he's like, oh, I don't know if I could have trusted this man, okay? What he's saying, the man, the man who's saying this is, has been in prison like eight times for uh, possession, intent to distribute like crack cocaine. Uh, he was a con man. He went by like three different names. He had active warrants in states like. Like the notion that this guy was like, oh, yeah, Barack Obama, on the other hand, didn't seem like a trustworthy individual is pretty funny. Wire and check fraud. You're giving money to purchase drugs or even for sexual activity. You have to be sure that you can trust them. And when I say trust, I mean that you're not going to end up being robbed or that you're not going to end up having a knife stuck into you, right. you know, from one direction or another, or that you're not going to pull up somewhere and all of a sudden the car door is going to open and you got five people pulling you out of it. Totally. That's what I mean when I yep. say. Yeah, trust dude, they're, they, Barack Obama, he was like worried that Barack Obama was going to, you know, kidnap him. And, and you... And you've been around at this point oh, in yeah. your life, big time. Yeah. Right. So probably not your first time in a situation like this. Not at all. And, and that's why I said I pretty much know where I can go and, and yeah. at, at what point. Um, so you start <laughs> rubbing his leg and he's, I mean, I, I think, I'll just be totally blunt with you, like, 
a man who's not into gay sex would be like, whoa, 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 whoa settle, settle down. Trust me, if it was something that you were not interested in, yeah. uh, and you're right, I've had guys that uh, I read wrong that would literally try to break your hand. For sure. Uh, if, if you went in that route. So it, it's not like this was something that he wasn't into. It's yeah. not something that he was shocked by. Yeah. Uh, shocked by you don't get excited and you don't unbutton your pants and you don't just sit there and let it happen. Yeah. So it wasn't, it definitely wasn't Barack's first time. Uh, that much I'm, I'm absolutely certain of. Uh, and I would almost be willing to bet you it wasn't his last. So, um, so you performed oral sex on Barack I did. Obama. You did. Um, w in, in the drivers up front? Yep. Bro, come on, Tucker. It's journalistic malpractice. And not ask what his dick looks like, brother. What is happening? We're all in it for the same thing. We want to know how big his wee-wee was. Get to the fucking point, dude. God damn. And he's cool with this. The driver has the partition up. He didn't have a problem with it. He didn't put it down for any reason. I mean, he kind of set up the whole thing for this in the first he, place. Exactly. And I have a funny feeling he had no uh, bones to pick with it as far as what took place. In yeah. It. Um, so what happened after? Uh, afterwards, I actually went back to my hotel. I had specifically asked that he drop Barack off first. Huh. But for some reason, <laughs> someone in the chat literally said, is this real? <laughs> or AI? <laughs> oh, no, nah, it's real, man. It's very real. Is it truthful? No, <laughs> but <laughs> oh, it's so good. He and Barack chose that they would drop me off at the hotel first and then he would take Barack. So Barack actually made the drive out to Gurney, which is a suburb outside of Chicago, um, to the hotel for me to be dropped off. What hotel was it? It was the Comfort Inn in Gurney. Ooh, that sounds depressing. It, well, you have to remember it was 99. Yeah, <laughs> it was the Comfort Inn. Ooh, it sounds depressing. Not after I got my, not after I sucked Obama's dick sideways, dude. Sucked the soul out of this man. Suck the skin off of his cock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it was close to the Great Plain, Great Lakes Naval facilities. Yeah. But um, I got dropped off. They left. Uh, the next day was somewhat interesting because he ends up showing up at my hotel room, which I thought was what? Came, somewhat weird. Wait, I didn't know about this part. But, he came back for round two? Barack Obama came back for seconds. Let's go. He wanted some more. Mm -hmm. He so wanted when you say some he more. Up, he just he showed up. I mean, oh, I he... had no warning. I was in the room. There's a knock on the door. Bussy I open too. the door and he's standing there. And he's standing there with more coke. And he comes in, and it was just like a quick, you know, rehash or rerun from the night before. Exact same program. Exact. Bro, he's literally, dude, I can't quit you yet. I can't quit you. You, you're way better than my husband, wife, Mike Obama. That's what he said. Uh, what a fantasy. Dude, listen, listen, guys, guys. Maybe, we, we were saying that the time and place was wrong in 2008 because people weren't as stupid as they are now. But perhaps this is a sign of progress that a, a gay geriatric man can write Wattpad fanfics about how they wanted to suck and fuck the president of the United States of America. Okay? I'm just saying, back then, we were not receptive because we did not care about the fantasies of this person. Now, at least, we're like, oh, isn't that wonderful? Good job. Same program. Was he smoking again? Yeah. So Barack Obama smokes crack and then you perform yep. oral sex on him. And the, like I said, the only reason I had come out in, about it is I had reached out to the campaign even in 2007, only because I saw all these kids getting excited about it. Okay, wait, just, I, I just, so how did that end? Like Same way. So you get off, you finish smoking, you leave. Like, thanks, bye. Mm -hmm. huh. Pac-Man knew 
Why President Obama is a gay man? Sir choose, sues woman libel lawsuit. Lysol libel lawsuit, much more. Okay. To be fair, it's 2012, so he was probably he probably wasn't even covering this one. He was probably covering like the classic Mike Obama shit. You hear India's changing his name? Yeah, I heard. And I heard Pakistan is trying to take the India the name India. What did you think of him? I thought it was interesting. Uh, I thought he was definitely a con. But what do you mean by that? Well, in my life at that point, you had you you made it clear I had already been around. Yeah, big time. Yeah. So you know when people are doing things because they actually really enjoy it or they're sincere or they're looking, you know, for yeah. a connection or they're doing something because they're looking for an in or they're looking for a hook or it's a game. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I felt that it was a game for him. It, it was like, okay, what am I going to get out of it? Or is there something I can get out of it other than just, you know, the sexual part? Right. And lucky for me, I wasn't going back to Chicago anytime soon. So it really didn't matter. So you were left with a bad taste in your mouth. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you talk to him again? I did not. In fact, I... And did you have any idea? Even though you had sex with him twice, you did cocaine with him, watched him smoke crack twice, you had no idea who he was. I had no idea who he was until I'm sitting in my house in Tequala, Nagate, Mexico in 2004, and he walked on that stage... In Boston. ...in the DNC convention, and I literally hit the floor. I just hit the floor and was... Wait, so you're watching the Democratic Convention from Mexico. I was and laughing. And the guy that smoked crack in your comfort in with you. I was laughing so hard. And you were sure it was him. I was absolutely positive. How? You, I don't forget people I've met. I don't forget people I have spent time with. I just don't. And just to, just to restate, because I think you affirmed this, but... Um, he used his real name. When you yes. Did he call himself Barack or Barry? Barack. Barack. Mm -hmm. And so did the driver. And that's why at first when everybody was referring to him as Barry, I just didn't understand or, or, or catch on. Because like I said, I didn't know that much about him other than the fact that, hey. He didn't know that much about him except, you know, apparently he sucked his cock twice. Wait, did Austin have to go to Mexico to find this guy? Yes. But not just find him, but really to find love, actually. Not just to find him, but to find love. If this man could suck off Barack Obama after Barack Obama had done crack cocaine, back of a limousine, and suck him to completion with his gummy shit, I thought maybe I'd give it a fucking spin myself. That's right. That's why I'm in Mexico. That's journalism, baby. You know, you you hook up. You know, today it's grinder. Back then it was, you know, the limo driver. Yeah, a limo driver or a bartender. You know, you ask and somebody knows somebody or somebody doesn't. Biting is this biting your nails is a sign of parasites. I would pick up some parasite medicine in Mexico while you're here. What, brother? I've had a parasite in me since I was like fucking five years old. Then because. I've been picking at these shits for three decades, okay? Amazing. Amazing. So you're sitting there in Mexico watching this, and you think, that's the guy I had sex with who smoked crack it with me. Yep. And what do you think? Like I said, I just started cracking up. I freaked out. I had even pointed out to some friends of mine that were at the house that night, and I told them, I said, you're not going to believe this. I said, I blew this guy twice. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Yeah, they were like, sure, Larry. Sure. <laughs> you know, and they just start cracking up. But that's the thing about me. I've never been in the closet. I've never hid. I mean, I'm always very direct and blunt. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I'm just like, this is unreal, you know. And I had no idea that he was going to run, you know, in 2008. But I was back from Mexico, but it, it was a strange 
feeling sitting there watching him walk across that stage and realizing who he was. Huh. So what did you do? You said you reached out to the campaign? Well, I didn't do anything in 2004, but when he announced his run for 2008, I did reach out to the campaign in late 2007 because I had seen a lot of these college. The most believable part about this is that my man Larry Sinclair is sitting in Mexico watching the 2004, like what, DNC speech on live television in Mexico with his gay friends in Mexico. Okay, like randomly, he was just watching. That that was his content. Big fan. No, he he saw him first in 2004. That's what he's saying. And now what he said, did I misunderstand that? He didn't say anything back then, but when he ran for president, that's when he actually said something. 1999 is when he sucked him. First time he saw him, he claims he was watching the DNC speech in fucking Mexico. Okay. Didn't know who Obama was, and he was shocked. He sucked him in 99, and then he saw him on television when he was sitting in Mexico in, uh, in, in uh, uh, you know, in a house with his friends because they loved doing watch parties in 04 for the DNC. They, they had a DNC watch party. Kids talking about how thrilled they were how there was a, a candidate who was completely honest about his entire life, his drug use. Gay people are you know, apolitical? He... Is that what your takeaway is? Your takeaway is that? That's what I mean? Like, you think it's a believable story that he is watching the DNC on television? Like, the DNC speeches on television? Bro, I'm a political commentator. I do this professionally. A lot of you guys... Would never in a million years watch half the shit I'm watching if it wasn't for us watching it as a community. I don't even watch the fucking DNC speeches. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, we only watch the highlights half the time. What the fuck do you mean? What are, what are, what are we talking about here? You, you think, like, someone would fucking turn on the television and, and have all the homies together? Maybe do some, get some popcorn ready? Microwave some popcorn? They're like, oh, my favorite. The DNC, <laughs> the DNC speeches are on. Let's turn on C-SPAN. You know what I mean? He did as when he was in school. You know, the constant back and forth. One minute is, yes, I did cocaine when I was younger. Or no, I never did cocaine, but I smoked weed. So I just simply pointed out that all I was asking was, look, why don't you just simply come out and say, I did coke and I've done it as recently as 1999. You know, just tell the truth. Put it out there and be honest and let it stay as the truth rather than this. This is what's fucked up. This is what's fucked up. Okay. My man, if what you said is true, why are you fucking it up? Okay. Like, what do you mean? Oh, come out and tell the world that like I sucked your dick. Get the fuck out of here. Come out and tell the world that you did crack and then I sucked your cock. Come on. What do you mean, dude? Now, obviously... As much as I joke, there is one thing I, I will uh, tell you. As it, in all sincerity, I'm going to be serious for a brief moment in this like very deeply unserious story and tell you this much. Barack Obama is the type of dude who had presidential aspirations from the jump. If you think two things, if you think one, that old Barry boy would not have had enough riz to get some primo top shelf dick and pussy and bussy, okay? I don't know what to tell you. And if you think he, as a person who was already in politics at this point in 1999, would fucking cast his presidential aspirations aside to do some crack with a toothless crackhead in the back of a limousine, you are the type of dude who will buy Iraqi dinars, okay? You are 100% the type of dude who will buy colloidal silver, okay? Which, of course, happens to be a big chunk of the Fox News audience, so they might believe the, th the shit that Larry is saying. Andrew Gillum did it, though? Yes, except Andrew Gillum wasn't married to a woman at that point, I don't think. And Andrew Gillum apparently wasn't going to become 
Barack Obama anyway. Also, once again, Andrew Gillum didn't fuck a toothless crackhead. He fucked a super sexy gay porn star. Okay? He was caught in Fountain Blue, not in the back of a fucking limo, in Gurney, okay? He was in the Fountain Blue with a gay porn star doing meth. That's a little bit different. Why the fuck? You're, you're forgetting what I'm saying. Why the fuck would Barack Obama fuck this toothless crackhead? I choose to believe gay men. Well, you're at the wrong place because I never believe gay men, okay? As you guys know, this is a, a <laughs> LGBT enemy community. I haven't said that in a while, so maybe some of y'all forgot, okay? Uh, anyway, let's continue. Back and forth. Um, never did hear anything back uh, from them immediately. How did, who did you reach out to? Do you remember? I reached out to actually David Axelrod's office in Chicago. I'm trying to remember the letters because it was actually three letters. And did you say I had sex with Barack Obama? <laughs> this is the interesting part. My first contact with the campaign never mentioned the sex whatsoever. Um, that was actually brought to my attention by someone. This is such a funny story because like, like there is not even an ounce of credibility in any aspect of this. And it's also quite ironic that the Tucker Carlson's of the world who normally be like, uh, making up false accusations about having sex with someone is completely ridiculous. What is this? Toothless suction? Extract throat goat Larry Sinclair in Mexico? Okay, dude. What the fuck are you doing? Why did you do this? Why did you work so hard on this? And more importantly, why did you fucking... Why did you put Kaya in here, okay? Keep Kaya out of these shenanigans, please. Um, Wally was high pretty much the same pretty controlled pretty controlled euphoric um talkative but not really saying anything so it was like his presidency a lot like it um was it your impression and of course you wouldn't strictly speaking no but was it your impression that this was the first time you'd ever smoked crack no no uh you don't first of all you don't buy crack get in a limo and have a pipe in your pocket if it's the first time you smoke crack. Yeah. You just mm. don't. That makes sense. If you believe any of this, I feel so bad for your decaying brain. I don't. I think those guys are having much more fun than we are. Like, think about it. There's not a single thought in that mind, okay? There is not a single thought in that mind. Everything is fun, unique, and entertaining, okay? You're... <coughs> You believe the most insane shit. Life is so different for you. It's like the difference between the way we analyze color and the way like dogs analyze color. You know what I mean? Like they have, they're operating on a different playing field entirely, these people. Okay? They're thinking at the top of the hour, there is no three minute ad break. When you know there is a three minute ad break at the top of the hour. Now, of course, that's what the same person knows. Same person also takes some precautions against the top of the hour ad break. The same person says, oh, I don't want to see the top of the hour ad break. I'm going to subscribe for $5 or for free. With the Twitch Prime, that is. By connecting my Amazon Prime account to, your, uh, to my Twitch account. I'm going to do that. I'm calling the Mexican border agents on you. Go ahead. Do it. They'll come over and they'll suck me dry, okay? They'll suck my shit like Larry Sinclair did to Barack Obama. Moth666, thank you for the five gifted subs. That man can't process mental stimulation. I mean, I don't know about that man. But the people that believe this guy 100% live very fun lives because they are, they're just completely insane. Like, they're just completely and utterly insane. Anyway, here's the three-minute ad break now. So, um, I, I read about okay, thank you for the been written about not very much. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd never read that Donald Young, this man Donald Young, called you and told you that he knew you'd had sex with Barack Obama. That was the contact in late 2007 Anomalous that, Danielle, that, thank I you for the that originally came under the guise that they were, the, they were part of the Obama campaign. So who was Donald Young? Donald Young was a choir director and a school teacher. 
He was the choir director at Jeremiah Wright's church in Chicago, the same church that Barack Obama went to. Uh, he was also a very openly gay black yes. man, uh, but very well respected. Did you know him? I had never met him. I had not even realized that the person who was communicating with me had been killed uh, until a good two months after. So uh, I'm, I'm going to get to that. So Donald Young is the choir director at Jeremiah Wright's church. Yes. And is it publicly confirmed that he knew Barack Obama? Oh, yes. Yes. Donald Young's own mother has repeatedly said that she feels that her son died to protect Barack Obama. It's just interesting that Donald Young would have called you. He's not working directly for the campaign that we know of. Exactly. But somehow he has a copy of your letter. It sounds like maybe Donald Young was on cleanup duty. Somehow he has my phone number. Exactly. And that's what? exactly what, what what is going on? What? Why would why would someone from Barack Obama's church, okay? which he immediately cut ties with because he's a pussy and a coward. And the only reason why he was involved with Jeremiah Rice Church to begin with was so that he could uh, have a leg up in Chicago politics. Why would that guy be the guy on cleanup duty? Why wouldn't he just hire like an actual fucking PI? What it was, because like I said, the first calls were it was I was led to believe that he was with the campaign. The last conversation that I had had with Donald Young, he had actually come clean and said that he had been asked to call me and that his job was to get as much information from me as far as. If this dude was even remotely credible, Hillary Clinton would have pounced on this and ran gay Muslim Arab attack ads in 2008 from sunup to sundown. Like, you know, 2008 Hillary Clinton wished this story was true. Yeah, that's another reason why this is definitely fucking fake. Because if it was real, Hillary Clinton would have been like, Barack Obama was sucking dick and doing crack cocaine, okay? Her campaign is the reason why the Barack Obama's of Muslim narratives were first aired to begin with. Like the whole Barack Obama wearing a turban. Like that was, that was her campaign that leaked that shit. Who I had spoken to, who I had given any information to, uh, and to get the, to them. Uh, he had told me to be careful, to watch myself, and to understand that the Barack Obama campaign was not in any way, shape, or form going to acknowledge anything or come out about anything. And he had made it clear that he had known Barack for quite some time and had had an intimate relationship with Barack for quite some time. He told you that? Yep. And that's when... Did you come into contact with some kind of animal or pet when you were five? That's probably where you got your nail-biting parasites from? What is this guy saying, dude? That's right. Might be time to get it out. I love this guy. I love my insane weirdos in the chat, dude. I just, I do. It's like a fun little way to, to break away from the content for a brief moment. <laughs> just, just fun, fun little guys in the chat. He's like, no, actually, you definitely have some parasites in you since, uh, since you were five. And I knew that I could at least trust what I was being told. Um, originally, I had made it clear I didn't feel comfortable with the phone call because something just didn't seem right. But after a couple of calls, it started to all fall into place. And I had said the same thing to myself. Wait, so you didn't know Donald Young existed? Nope. It sounds like you're not very political anyway. You weren't. At the I wasn't at the time. And you were just annoyed that Obama was talking about cocaine and lying about it. I was extremely annoyed. But the sex part had nothing to do with it. No. Then Donald Young, who you don't know, never heard of, calls up and says, by the way, I know you had sex with Barack Obama. I did too. Yep. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> um, I mean, this is a longer conversation, which we're going to have in a minute. But I mean, Obama has a wife and kids and he's telling America what a great family man he is. Is that or maybe you've seen this a lot? I, what, what do you think of that? Well, people who are not political love watching dnc speeches just like like they always have dnc speeches on tv like in even in mexico they have a satellite tv so they just so they can watch it but i don't know why i'm just so hyper focused on this insane one like super stupid detail it's just because every part of this is so dumb like yeah obama was letting the whole town hit okay 
He was letting the whole town hit. He was fucking and sucking. Everyone in Chicago knew it. He had a hungry mouth, okay? He was being a little slut. Well, you know, in 2008, I made it clear that Obama was having marital problems in 99, and everybody uh, in the world said that I was crazy, didn't know what I was talking about. And yet, what was it, six months ago, Barack Obama comes out and tells the world that exactly what I said was the truth. In 1999, he and Michelle... Wait, what? He, Obama? Wait, this guy hallucinated that Obama said that in 1999 he, he had a gay affair with Larry Sinclair? What? Came very close to divorce. Really? 15 years later, what I say is the truth, but 15 years earlier, I'm a liar and a fraud. Yeah. It's interesting how things eventually come out. But yes, I believe... Wait. So, wait... <laughs> First of all, the the part about Obama's marriage, uh, not like being on, uh, you know, being in rocky waters or whatever, that part is not even remotely interesting. And also, I don't think Larry Sinclair mentioned that back in 2008. He added that recently after he probably came out and said it. Classically, you have to have gay sex when your wife is mad at you. No, his wife is mad. Because um, he wasn't having sex with her, or uh, uh, Michael, him, whatever. That's another classic trope that, like, for those of you who don't know, because you're Zoomers, uh, Republicans ran with whole, uh, ran with a whole, like, Michelle Obama is actually, uh, Michelle Obama is a man, and that uh, her name is actually Michael. Which, now that I think about it, is like the first transvestigation, I guess. So they were kind of cutting edge on that front. And they still kind of do that. They still say it all the time. And it's, it's actually just that back then it was more racist. Like the, the classic like, oh, she's a black woman. She's actually a man uh, type shit. But, um, you know, I mean, they're still doing it. Believe me, I've seen, I've known guys that were completely happily married that will screw around uh, with another man on a weekly basis and think nothing of it. Huh. Was it, is, is it your sense that that's who Obama is, just transactional or that he's bisexual or like, what is this? No, my feeling that Barack Obama is probably, he's definitely bi. Um, I think uh -huh. it, there is a lot of transactional uh, qualities to him because I think whatever he does, it is looking. By visibility, we're doing by visibility. For a hook or looking for a benefit. Yeah. Dude, whenever there's by visibility in this community, it is always for the worst reasons, man. It's always the worst, okay? <laughs> it's like Kirsten Cinema or fucking Barack Obama. Uh, that that's consistent with his public persona too, I would say. Um, so, Dolly Young calls you. You actually end up sounds like you kind of like and trust Dolly Young. I did. Um, did he say how long he'd had a relationship with? He her? had just said that they had been intimate for years. Intimate for years. Um, and what happened to Donald Young? Donald Young was shot dead in his apartment on the second floor in Chicago, Illinois. I think it was December 23rd of 2007. 2007. According to the police report and the death certificate, multiple gunshot wounds, uh, close range, no forced entry, second floor apartment, yet not a single resident in the building heard a single shot. But yet, they can hear every shot that's fired in the street outside. Wait, so what, like, what's the argument? Barack Obama did it, and he did it with, like, a new type of gun that only bisexual uh, presidential candidates have access to? Like, what, like, what, what is he, what the fuck? Like, what's he trying to say here? Um, Jeremiah Wright announces that Donald Young's dead earlier that morning, even before it was announced, he, even before he was declared dead i mean a lot of it just didn't wait <laughs> what no that is definitely not what what
Dude, I love conspiracies because they always go so hard. <laughs> they always go so fucking hard. Like, you could have just kept it at the other shit, which he probably is lying about as well. But no, you gotta go the distance every time. Every fucking time. It's like, and actually, uh, and then, uh, you know, everybody in the building also had what they now know as Havana Syndrome. Yeah, that's right. Uh, before, we didn't know back then what was going on, but everyone had diarrhea for a week. It makes sense. Um, this is all public, and you can yep. look this up, and um, it's still on the internet. Uh, tell us about Don Young's mother. Norma Jean Young actually is a former Chicago Police Department employee. Really? Really. She has worked for the Chicago PD. Um, I had spoken with his sister Lorraine shortly after I realized that he was the gentleman that I had been speaking with. Uh, there were people at the time that were attempting to have Lorraine uh, and other members of Donald's family file criminal complaints against me with Chicago because they wanted me arrested. They were trying to get the family to say that I was trying to con them or something. Uh, to my knowledge, they never uh, did any such thing. Uh, but at the same time, I, I continue to respect Lorraine and the rest of the family. Um, but Mrs. Young had finally come out and told David Nelson, who was a reporter that I knew out of Minnesota, uh, that she was convinced that Donald had been killed, that his death was to protect his friend Obama. And she confirmed that they had, in fact, been extremely close for years. Um, I mean, did she confirm that they'd had sex, Obama and Donald Young? Her confirmation wasn't referencing, or she did not specifically say that they were sexually involved. She just simply said that they had been intimate friends for, for years. But she believed the Obama campaign was she, responsible. She believed that his death was due to protecting Barack Obama. And I made the Stop. same- Stop! The Dyson of Duluth? Really? You're stuck with that for fucking 60 days, Chatter. Why did you do that? Thank you for the five gifted subs, the Dyson of Duluth. Scum did you so dirty? Wait, why? What did he do? <laughs> what? Oh, fuck. I first met Mr. Show in 99. That's fucked up, dude. My head is much small. Uh, fuck. My head is much larger than that. Fuck. Fuck you guys, man. Oh, God. Here, just keep argument that. Fuck you. People said, well, how are you accusing Barack? I said, I'm not accusing Barack of anything. But I said, I'm willing to bet my life that Barack Obama and Jeremiah Wright both know or have knowledge of who killed Donald Young. There is no doubt in my mind about that. Well, this was a guy who was clearly gonna be the next leader of, of the world. You know, people kill each other over insurance claims, over bar fights. And there's a lot at stake here. I, mm -hmm. I have no knowledge of this. I'm not alleging no. uh, a murder by the Obama campaign or its allies, but it, it's not. It's not a crazy thing to wonder, obviously. No, and the only thing I, after I realized what had happened with Donald Young, the only thing I'd ever asked was the same thing that I had done. And I said, you know, if you want to accuse me of being crazy, you know, release your phone records, you know? Turn over your phone records from your phone in 99. Turn over your phone records for the last year. I mean, it's that easy. If you've got nothing to hide, it's not like they're gonna be made public. Turn them over to authorities, let them investigate, let them look, but no. Wait, what? So, um, bro, why would anybody voluntarily do that? Because some insane person who he's never met is saying that he struck your dick. Like, why would anybody do that? What a ridiculous fucking take. <laughs> I, now seems like a fair time to ask about your, your motive. So your initial motive was you were annoyed because you believed or you knew that mm -hmm. Obama was lying about his drug use. Right. But then after the Donald Young exchange where he brings up the sex that you had with Obama, um, what's... What was the point at which you decided, I'm just going to bring this to the country? I'm going to go public. Well, in January of 2008, 
after having contacted uh, the campaign yet again. I had decided, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to make a YouTube video and put it up, which I did. Um, it wasn't because I was looking for anything out of it. In fact, if I had even stopped long enough to anticipate the blowback uh, and, and the consequences of speaking out, um, me being me, it probably would not have stopped me. It might have slowed me a little bit, but it would not have stopped me. But um, Blowback is right. I figured if you're going to call him out, you can't call him out on part of it. And, and people said, well, why didn't you just talk about the drug use and leave the sex out? And I said, because if I said he just used drugs and then you found out later it was drugs and sex, you would accuse me of lying because I didn't mention the sex. So what? my... What? Brother. Larry. If people actually found out that you guys fucked and did drugs together, you would be hailed as a hero for revealing that you just the other part, even even the crack part. Like the crack part's the part that's wilder than the fucking gay sex part. <laughs> this is crackhead logic, yeah. And that opinion was if you're going to tell the story then you tell the whole story and let the chips fall where they may so that's exactly what i did and so you made a youtube video by the way i look i looked for it last night i couldn't find it that's because youtube gave access to my account to someone shortly after uh the polygraph test and i was never given access back to it before the video was actually deleted are you serious? Oh, yeah. YouTube gave access to the account and the video was deleted. Microsoft gave access to my Hotmail account and all of my emails were circulating the Internet and vacation replies were set up on my email telling people that I was busy uh, giving blowjobs and would get back with them when I was done. And oh, yeah. Man, they wanted Obama to be president. Yep, and they wanted me to be the biggest fraud and nutcase. Brother, you went to jail for fraud before you came out and lied about sucking Obama's dick. You literally went to jail for, like, check fraud, right? What are you saying? <laughs> like, ah, everyone, they really tarnished my reputation as a crackhead con man fraudster. That ever existed. So I got to ask you, I mean, you know, I, I wasn't there. I can only assess what mm -hmm. you're saying. I don't see any obvious motive for you for gain, financial gain. You're not going to get rich doing this. And, and in fact, you haven't. You've gotten impoverished uh, as a result of it. But like if I'm a reporter, well, I was a reporter at the time. I remember thinking, well, that's an interesting story. But it seemed like nobody in the media wanted to follow up with you and some people like ben smith at politico who's a liar and a shill posing as a journalist i, I reread the piece last night that he wrote saying oh it's ridiculous right off the, the first graph it's ridiculous these claims dog of course it's ridiculous yeah, because it is man like i don't get it i gotta look at the fucking comments dude i'm actually worried for tucker who knows what these people might do this man's non-verbal cues are on point. He isn't lying. I was full of doubts about this guy's claims. By the end of the interview, the guy came across pretty credible. Didn't Tucker Jr. really believe this? No, of course he doesn't believe it, dude. What are you kidding me? Well, I think I have an answer for why a lot of reporters did not want to follow up. And I think it would have something to do with what David Axelrod told a old Chicago Sun-Times uh, reporter. Or no. A Chicago Tribune reporter, uh, John Crudson. Uh, Axelrod had been a reporter in Chicago before okay. he went into politics. Well, John Crudson worked for the Chicago Tribune. And John Crudson actually came to Duluth, Minnesota and sat down with me and, and talked with me. Do you think the guy actually deluded himself into thinking this actually happened? No, because he failed a lie detector test. Not that like lie detector tests are fucking great. You know, he did a lie detector test and he failed it. So if he had actually deluded himself, he 
he might as well have been able to like you know pass the lie detector test and john crutzen had told me point blank that before he had flown out that he had spoken to Axelrod and that Axelrod had told him that they were aware of who I was and that it was their intentions to destroy me and that if any reporter had mentioned me to them, they would be completely cut off and that outlet would be completely... Body detector tests are actual provable bullshit, but he still failed it anyway. He failed an already bullshit test. That's what I'm saying. cut off from access to the Obama campaign for the duration of the year. So I think that had a lot to do with why reporters didn't bring things up to the campaign, because everybody wanted access to, you know, the new savior. How narcissistic must you be to think that everyone's out to get you? I don't think it's narcissism that has caused this man to think that they're gang stalking him. This is... This is uh, one of the few unique instances where it's not narcissism. It's a different kind of mental illness and crack, most likely. Nobody wanted to be blackballed and, and denied access to a historic campaign. Yeah, but I mean, if it's the guy's running for president and credible information comes out that he's smoking crack and having sex with dudes. Credible information. I mean, that, that seems like a story. Well, it would be a story if the media really cared about telling people the truth about anything. Yeah, they're liars. And that Ben Smith is a liar. Oh, Ben Smith's more than a liar, but you're right. What do you mean more than a liar? He's a complete fraud. Ben Smith, you know, I hear people talking about grifters. Ben Smith to me is a grifter. Ben Smith wrote an article um, saying that I had a 27-year Criminal, criminal history. Career criminal. And the funny thing is, is if you look my criminal history up, which I've published myself and provided from day one, uh, my criminal history goes from 1980 to 1986. And everything I've ever done, I've owned it. I've never wasted taxpayer money. And any sentence I've ever been given, I've served. Um, but he also... Bro, wait, what? My name is Larry Sinclair. I'm a former recreational drug user, drug trafficker, and I'm a convicted felon for crimes of forgery, bad checks, and theft by check. I have Bro, he literally spends the next like this is this is the guy, okay? He had like multiple active warrants out for his arrest in 2007. He's like, "Oh yeah, I've only done crimes in in 1990 uh, in 1983 to 1986, which, by the way, here he says 1980 to 1986. No, I don't think he's stopped doing crimes since the 1980s. He's just like a scammer. I lived and worked under three different legal names. My yeah, that's the other part. He's like changed his names multiple times. Uh, demon rats are trying to distract the people with this, ignoring the fact that the average working class American has warrants out for their arrest and multiple felonies in their name in multiple names that they've changed legally. Political reason. Well, uh, let me slow down. There's no le legitimate factual reason to interview a con artist and crackhead who is making these absurd claims. I'm not a fan of this. I wasn't a fan of it when they did it to Brett Kavanaugh. I'm not a fan of it now. That being said, I brother, the Brett Kavanaugh situation and this is not comparable. What the fuck? Oh my god, that is such an. Yo, Republicans are so insane, dog. Wait, there's a but. Oh my god, he said but. I didn't even realize. Because he was, oh God, what, what is he? But, okay. I applaud Tucker Carlson for doing it. You know why? Welcome to the tit for tat world of politics. So to clarify. Oh, oh, you made me do it. Got it. Oh, look what you made me do. Oh, this thing that I consider to be horrific and monstrous and awful. We got to do it because you made us do it. You know, because we're weak. We're weak-minded, zero backbone individuals. Look what you made me do. Bye. There's a political reason to do this, to attack the Democrats, I guess, to make them look like degenerates, to strike at the credibility of the Obamas, maybe to... Absolutely zero people give a fuck about this. If anything, it literally destroys what semblance of credibility that Republicans had within the Republican Party uh, base of support. Like, I always imagine, 
I always imagine like a, like a guy who owns like a catering company or something. You know what I mean? Like some Republican guy. He's like he owns a catering company, and he's like he's like a Repu he, he loves Ronald Reagan. You know what I mean? He voted for Donald Trump, and now he's just like sitting there and he's like watching, trying to find the Tucker Carlson interview. Okay, and he's just watching Tucker Carlson talk to this fucking crackhead con man. He's like, what the fuck's going on with this party? You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Liberals are out of control. I don't like how, uh, you know, I don't like all this gay shit. I don't like all the stuff that's going on. I love deregulation. I love tax breaks. But what the fuck are these guys doing? I don't give a shit. Barack Obama is not running for president. I don't know if this gambit is going to pay off in the way that Republicans want it to pay off for them. I don't know if they think that imaginary smart Republican sounds dope. No, it's not. First of all, some of these Republicans that I make up, I'm not making up. That's number one. Number two, there are plenty of people who are racist, plenty of people who love deregulation, plenty of people who love watching Fox News, who still find it odd when you go the distance. And just like kind of turn the other cheek a little bit. And we see this in the way that uh, in the way that it plays out in elections. We see the way that these guys literally fucking go out and vote. They either turn the other cheek and like try to look away and still vote for the Republican Party or they just don't vote at all. They like tap out. They're like, yeah, fuck this. I'm not interested. It's not going to turn them into Democrats, but it will turn them into non-voters. You know what I mean? Because then they're like, oh, God, this is gross. Like, what the fuck is going on? These guys are so nutty. You are actively building a QAnon contingency in your party at the cost of alienating other moderate voters, more moderate voters, who are definitely interested in voting for the Republican Party, definitely racist, definitely homophobic, definitely sexist, right? But they're like, but this shit's gross. They don't want to be associated with the freaks. There are so many Americans who just don't want to be associated with the freaks. They don't give a fuck about moderates. It's not even like, I wouldn't even necessarily say they're moderates. I just think they're, because moderate is not the right term for what I'm talking about. It's the political term for what I'm talking about, but I don't think these guys are actually fucking moderates at all. I'm just, I just don't, I think they're normal. Like they find it gross to like fucking, uh, say that like a, like a rape victim, a 13-year-old girl needs to get an abortion. You know, I mean, uh, not needs to get an abortion, sorry, needs to have to carry that pregnancy to term by law. Like, conservative, normal people who are still absolutely racist, absolutely sexist, homophobic, whatever, still will look at that and go, that's fucking nuts, dog. I don't know if I agree with that. Do you see what I mean? There are plenty of people who it's not going to change the way they vote. Yes, but it usually does have the capacity to stop them from voting. That's what you're that's what you don't understand. So while you're pushing while you're pushing for an active base uh, looking for a new constituency that you're building in the form of like QAnon, just like you did with the evangelical Protestants, you're you end up alienating a lot of suburban voters who are like, I don't know, I feel like it's a little too far for me. Does that make sense? It's not, like, as long as they don't do this shit, if they just did everything that Trump was doing and didn't constantly fucking cry endlessly about, like, how Trump lost, for example, and how the election was stolen from him, if Trump shut the fuck up about losing the election or having the election be stolen from him a lot of those people would have still stayed on board you know but the the single issues that will carry them to the polls is never going to be they're mutilating teenagers and and cutting their genitals okay because at that point you're lost in your own sauce just like there is no appetite in the democratic party's base of support for permanent first world genocide, okay? Like, can you imagine someone just like running around unwashed because they think showers are an unjustifiable hierarchy, simultaneously telling 
every fucking like small business owner that they need to be killed. Okay? Because this is the Republican equivalent of that. It's the Republican equivalent of that. The Democratic Party, I don't expect them to ever hug and kiss those people anyway, because they're not like a viable constituency of voters anyway. They're fucking, they never vote. Right? But the reality is, it's no different than like, if the Democratic Party turned around, if the Democratic Party turned around and, and, and basically cut propaganda and videos and like endlessly talked to that base of support as though and messaged, uh, it tailored their messaging around that base of support because that's what the trans shit looks like for a lot of people. It comes across as gross and weird and crazy. What is this? You're talking about my stepdad and mom. They live in the middle of nowhere. And every time I talk to them, they don't understand the dumb shit on Fox News rather than her sister, my aunt, who rambles about QAnon shit every time they talk. I end up having to try and explain it and they don't get it. They do indeed end up thinking it's stupid and not worth going into the city to vote. They're not moderate. They just haven't lost the plot. Yeah, these guys, it's not a good, moderate is not a good term for it because like if you sat them down and you asked them straight up like what their perspective is on issues, right? Well, you ask them straight up what their perspective on issues is. It's like, oh, wow. Like, these are very fucking reactionary people. It's just, they're not so fucking reactionary that they legitimately think that, like, Joe Brandon swapped out all the fucking votes and, and still care about it to this day. And, like, there was a mass campaign with mail-in ballots that, uh, that was actually coordinated and COVID was fake and, but also simultaneously the deadliest thing on the planet. And it, like specifically didn't kill Ashkenazi Jews and the Chinese. And that also, uh, you know, the Democratic Party are a bunch of vampire uh, pedophiles who are, uh, who, who are stealing children all the time. And, you know, all this shit, all this shit combined, some of them might pick and choose different parts of the, the conspiracies that I just mentioned. Like, but none of that is going to be big enough None of that is going to be serious enough for them to go out and vote for the Republican Party out of fears because these, these people kind of find that to be strange, a little strange, a little gross. Prevent Michelle Obama from gaining traction or to create just some negative press around the Obamas. Fine, whatever. Simply put, the Democrats, the left and the media in this country entertained the most psychotic lies you could imagine about Brett Kavanaugh. Tucker Carlson is simply engaging in the exact same behavior. Legitimate political reason. Well, uh, I can't believe they're destroying Barack Obama's chances of becoming a Supreme Court justice, which, by the way, Brett Kavanaugh still is. So it didn't even work if that was the case. So I said that I was a fugitive, that I was avoiding prosecution. I was trying to prevent from going to jail. None of that was true. But the media ran with it, even Greta. Even Greta linked to it and said that people ask me why I would not interview Larry Sinclair. This is why. And she linked to Ben Smith's article. And notice his article was published right when I was preparing to do the press conference at the National Press Club. Not Greta Thunberg, it, man. It, Greta fucking what's her face? The one that used to be at Fox News. <laughs> Who left Fox News. The butch lady one year ago today. Damn, bro. R.I.P. Hey, the National Press Club, so-called beacon for freedom of, of the press. They were just as involved in trying to keep the story from ever being. It's interesting. I, I watched the other night. I watched your entire National Press Club appearance. And in it, you detail your intersections with law enforcement mm -hmm. in, in ex exhaustively. Yep. Every time you've been arrested, you explain it. Every time you've done time, you've ex yep. you explained it. So you didn't from what I could tell, hide your past. No, why? You, you can't, I mean, I've never hidden my past in regular everyday life. Why would I hide it in something like this? So, um, I mean, you're the only person on this set who's had sex with Barack Obama. So I think you're, I, I, I don't know, expert on Obama, but you know more than most people. What's your assessment of him now? Um... Uh, I think he's the same grifter that he's always been. I think he's still very power hungry. I think Obama is calling the shots in the current Biden administration Clearly. more than people are willing to admit. Um, Dude, 
the more I see stuff like this, the more I see the Hunter Biden shit, the more I can't help but admit, and people are going to yell at me a lot for this, okay, that Joe Brandon is kind of the Teflon Don. Like, his goofy, geriatric ass literally is so boring. Not to a fault, but, like, literally, it's like weaponized boringness, okay? Like, they can't pick at anything. They literally cannot pick at a single fucking thing with Joe Brandon. He's so fucking boring that, like, none of that shit moves the needle. So they have to, like, say, oh, well, Obama's still running the, uh, you know, government, and Obama is gay and did crack. Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Uh, remember Hillary Clinton? Lock her up. Come on, guys. Uh, Hunter Biden. Uh, uh, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden. Let's, let's, pro, let's throw him in jail because he did bad things. And maybe we can throw Joe Biden in jail. And it's like they just cannot turn him into a villain. Now, of course, Joe Biden also has his faults because... As much as he is uh, a boring old white guy, or as much as he's a boring old white guy, a lot of other boring old white men love his shit. And he has made a tremendous amount of gains for white men. Every other demographic, however, he has lost. He's underperforming by wide-ass margins in comparison to Hillary Clinton, in comparison to any other prior, uh, uh, you know, recent Democratic Party uh, presidential hopeful. So that's another thing to consider. That's actually becoming a big problem for him, I believe will be the biggest problem for him in this election cycle. Joe Brandon is doing great for uh, white people. He's doing great for the older white male category, much better than previous, uh, previous uh, Democrats. However... He's doing really fucking poorly in comparison to previous Democrats with uh, every other demographic. I think Obama is hell bent. Uh, I had made a statement during that press conference. I disagree. Brandon's doing poorly overall. Yeah, I do think he's doing poorly overall. No, no, make no mistake. He's doing poorly, but he is doing better than previous Democratic candidates or previous Democratic presidents with white men. Demographically speaking, he is doing much better than they have with white men. He's doing much worse with every other demographic, though. That I felt that Barack Obama being elected was going to push race, race relations in this country backwards 50 years. I am absolutely positive I was. <laughs> yes. I, well, I think you've been you've been vindicated on that because <laughs> race relations in this country has not only gotten pushed back, but everything's about race now. Everything. Everything is about victimization now. Uh, He's like, when I sucked Barack Obama's cock in 1999, there was no racism in the world, okay? I didn't see him as a black man. I saw him as a crackhead whose dick I wanted to suck. Now, though, nowadays, things are very different. Things are very different, okay? Everything's about race now. Um, I'm, it's interesting, though. Um, yeah, he's a, obviously a race hater, very anti-white, but he had sex with a white man. So you have to ask, like, is that real? Oh, for him, of course. I, and I would be willing to bet you I'm not the only white person he's ever had sex with, or male, anyone. Yeah. Um, but, hey, he's got what he wanted. You know, he is in D.C. He's living the life. He's still looked upon as as being the savior of, of the country, you know, and sadly, people are still giving him that power. And I think it's going eventually to be the, to the detriment of. Can, can I just ask you one last question? How did you it, that's it, I'm saying that it's very insightful because I I knew a lot of people who weren't liberal who voted for Obama purely on the race question. And they weren't all self-hating, guilty whites. They were like nice, normal people who wanted to see race relations improve. And that really was the core promise of his campaign. And a lot of people bought it. A lot of smart people bought mm -hmm. it. And I saw why they bought it. But you didn't buy it. How did you know that? I grew up in South Carolina in the 1960s and 70s, okay? I've been gay and knew I was gay since six years old. Never hit it, okay? Yeah. Uh, 
I grew up in rural South Carolina. And my first job as a kid was cropping tobacco for a family by the name of Rose that were a black family living across the road from my grandparents. Um, so I grew up as a kid, a gay kid, in an era and an area that would get you killed being gay just as quick as you could be hanging being black. So I actually knew the other side of the track before I knew that I was supposed to act like I was above this or above that. I've watched it my whole life. I know when someone plays, when it comes to acting like they're one way and then in reality, they're the biggest racists or bigots alive on both sides, okay? I knew because he was saying one thing in the campaign and then if people started to actually listen to what he was saying. I love thinking that Barack Obama hates white people. Like Barack Obama, who said originally in Ferguson that Black Lives Matter protesters were behaving like thugs. That Barack Obama hates white people. Brother, I just, I don't even know how I can have a conversation with a human being who thinks that Barack fucking Obama hates white people, okay? It's nuts. First of all, he's half white. So there's that aspect of it. But I don't even want to get into that because then there's like, maybe maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe, I mean, because it, it kind of doesn't matter. He's still... Uh, he's still seen black, right? And the more obvious, the more obvious answer here is just look at what, uh, yeah, I'm not doing like biracial discourse. I'm simply stating just look at what Barack Obama, how he presents himself, what he has said, and what he has done. And you will understand that this is not a man who, who hates white people at all. This guy was an online stalker who got the media to believe his long story. I mean, I think people don't even believe it. They just uh, are, are going along with it. Remember, there was a time when he actually told supporters to show up at a fight with a knife, get in people's face, argue with them if they didn't agree to support him, if they didn't agree to vote for him, argue with them, convince them. Come on. You don't make statements like that and tell me that you're not going to make things about race. He did. Man, that is, that is the one part of your story that we can say unequivocally you're telling the truth about. You saw that and most people didn't. Larry Sinclair, I'm really grateful that you came. I wish I had interviewed you in 2008. I don't think anyone would have run the interview. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, thank you. You're welcome, very much. thank you. Great to meet you. You too. That was incredible, dude.